Morning everybody. Well we made it home safe. Got the batteries here. I ended up using two more uh, straps just for extra safety to make sure they wouldn't shift and slide in the bed. And it worked out well. They made it all the way here with no problem. So it was about a four and a half hour drive. Uh, one way. So I'm about to put these on a pallet by the shed so we can get them worked in there later on. So talk to you guys in a little bit. Well there's a 3D bird fun fest we've got uh, right now they're all gonna take a nap this is their late morning nap and uh, they're all lining up on the post that I put up for them and they got three-dimensional space to explore and spread their wings so there's a, our uh, bigger birdies and then down below you can't see them but there's the littler ones Oops, down below so we've got two bird cages inside the tiny house on wheels, and the little chicks are doing very well. Melanie, go show how happy and friendly they are. Go put your hand up there. These guys are very, very lovey birds. Come over here. Never mind. Yeah, here they're tired right now. If you put your hand up here, come on, birdies. Hey birds. Mm -hmm. Now they're not going to come over. They're all getting tired all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Come on birds. Say good morning. morning. There they come. There's one pecking at my fingers and at Melanie's. They're friendly little birds and uh, they really love to uh, have attention. There they oh, are coming to her. So they're sweet. cute. They're really cute and they're really friendly. These are the friendliest birds I've ever had but Melanie has time and is uh, socializing with them. And they love her a lot. They're cute. Well, they're up and down all over. That gives them room to stretch their wings and fly and exercise. That's good. Makes some happy birds. They sleep on that too at night, so it's really cool. Uh, but we're be happy to get them out of the house because when it's um, older, they're really cute and really fun. They're a lot of work. They are a lot of work in the house because you have to keep the litter clean every, uh, just about every day once they start getting this size. It's pretty bad. But uh, a couple more weeks and these guys are going to be outside. I want to build them a new chicken coop, a good heavy duty and improved chicken coop uh, using some pallet wood that I got. So um, they'll be good. Right now there is no water in the tiny house on wheels at all. I have pulled the main cables from the battery bank off the tiny house and wheels. And now I am removing all the battery cables. Hope I'm not in your way too badly. Now sadly the junk forklift batteries have damaged a lot of my battery terminals or battery wires that I was using. So um, there's well there's three of them that are very 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 corroded so I don't know if I can recover them at all the terminals have been extremely badly corroded and I went in to buy terminals and when I got home I realized the biggest ones I had in town were too small for the gauge wire that I'm using so I'm not sure how this is going to work out for me now these batteries have served me well, these three. One is a interstate boat battery, and the two are the Alpha Cell Heavy Duty uh, Extreme Use batteries. They were 200 amp hours apiece. Although they were old, so I don't figure I had maybe 50% of that capacity inside. But they, it was a good experiment. They served me. They did their job for the period. Now the forklift battery uh, never did get above 12.2 volts from the day I got it. The, uh, the one forklift battery I got. And I couldn't get it to ever from the day I picked it up. From the day I got it, I never could get it to stay above 12.2 at rest. So I don't know what is up with that. I'm not saying I'm quitting on it, but it's sitting right here. I want to try to figure that out one day. 
Some people said I ruined the battery, but if you go back to my videos and you go back to the day that I got that battery and uh, I hooked it up, the first day I hooked it up, it was at 12.2 volts. And then if you go back to those videos, you can see for yourself that uh, I ran the DC generator for weeks without using the forklift battery at all. I wasn't putting any power on the forklift batteries. I used the DC generator for weeks um, trying to see if I could get that to charge up. And uh, it never came above 12.2 at rest, so I don't know what's up with that. But. These that I bought at the scrap metal yard for scrap price did serve me well for the last, I think, what, a couple months? So sometimes it's hit and miss, sometimes you get lucky and you get a battery that's good like them. So I'll put them into service somewhere else, uh, but they're, they're definitely good. I'm not going to leave them laying around because they're, they're still decent batteries. So. Anyway, I'm going to clear off this area and I've got to do some measuring to see how the Trojans are going to fit up here. Because these are, um, they're on a board on the bumper of the trailer. The original trailer that was the camper frame. And what I've got to do is try to get some support underneath the back side of the board with some cement blocks and some shims. And then put all the batteries on there together if I can get them all to fit. So let's see how this works out. Right now, I'm, I've taken apart the drain system of the house. I told Melanie, no running water right now because I'm going to have to reroute that. Um, I've disconnected the water to the house anyway, but uh, I can't have it run anything. It'll run right on my workspace. So the house has the house is now totally, totally, totally off the grid. No water, no power, no nothing. I have cut a pallet to fit onto the frame of the trailer. Now there's the bumper of the trailer. Okay, it goes through here, and there's a cross piece here, and I set the pallet so it's, it's right on the cross member that the cross piece of that frame. So the frame comes out to here into the bumper, and the bumper is secured by cement blocks and some uh, supports there, and on the other end as well, but you can't see that. And then I'm going to have to get this forklift battery and the other forklift batteries behind it out and get this pallet out of here. And then I want to put some more cross bracing down underneath this back corner later on. But for now, this will hold those batteries, and because all the weight is going to be centered on this pallet. And then I'm going to cut some uh, two by tens to fit, because the batteries are ten inches wide. So I'm going to cut some two by tens for extra extra strength here. And I'm hoping I'm not going to be too high and hit that water pipe, that drain. Well, I'll come over to the right of it a little bit, so it'll be all right. Um, so I'm going to have to reroute the drain. It's a major uh, modification here to the, to the house and the system, but um, this is going to be better. This is going to be so much better. The batteries will be on a pallet instead of just on a piece of plywood that I had down there before. Of course, I was only using three batteries before. And then um, I'm probably going to drill a new wall, a new hole in the wall for the wiring. I've got the gas line here, and a lot of people gave me flack about having electrical with gas, but that is a uh, special line that I was told you can run with electrical so it's no problem but I'm probably going to dr drill a new hole, <coughs> a new hole and uh, run the electrical through um, extra anyway and uh, run some heavy duty wiring so I'm going to get to it I cut two 2x10s two to put up on the pallet and that will give me strength and support and it spreads the weight out evenly across that pallet and across the bumper and the frame of the trailer. Now the frame goes dead center down this line and the bumper spreads out this way and I've got support here so I'm going to get this pallet out of here and get support under here as well like I said. I had a... I put some more blocks underneath the I-beam that crosses over as close as I could get up here and uh, jammed some boards in there so that'll help take the stress off this corner because I w was really concerned about 600 pounds of weight on just this corner on just this cement block so I feel a lot better about it now 
And then again, I want to put weight under this corner or uh, support under this corner once I get all this stuff out of here. But we got to get power back on the house right away. Well, there they are. The four or the eight Trojan T105s. It's about 600 pounds of batteries right there. Uh, try to, I'm out of breath, so sorry, but try to distribute the weight properly all over here. Uh, as good as I can and I was checking flex and uh, on, on the pallet and everything else as I was going I'm gonna get actually I'll put support under both uh, corners of the pallet when I'm done to eliminate sag in this back corner which will eventually occur of course with the weight of that that will happen so I don't want that although I have the pallet plus two by tens on there actually it's two by twelves because it's two by eleven but anyway it doesn't matter um, although I have a lot of thickness of wood on there to distribute the weight evenly on the pallet that back corner is still in the air so I need to get some uh, I'm gonna get a jack under there on some uh, solid wood and get the pressure off that back corner so that's more stable well, it's time to start hooking stuff up and uh, get some power in the tiny house on wheels again. So now I am putting a hole in the wall, what I always said I didn't like doing. I drilled from the inside out. I'm moving my electrical. Now that I have a wife, that changes things, and so it changes my plans. I am moving the electrical. Out of from out from under the kitchen counter area, and I'm going to have the electrical stuff by uh, underneath the um, charge controllers. six ply exterior grade plywood at a bad angle. I hope I can get a piece of uh, PVC through there. Right now I'm joining the pairs together to make four 12 volt batteries because these are all 6 volt batteries. That one goes here. I am taking any wing nuts that I have and putting them on the ends where I'll be putting in or drawing out power through the batteries for the most part. Now when working with batteries, you've got to be extremely careful not to touch anything together. So I keep that terminal covered with my hand, this exposed wire over here, covered very carefully with my hand while I work, so it doesn't touch anything. And you don't want to touch your wrench to any terminals and cross the terminals anywhere, because you'll melt your wrench and probably your hand very rapidly if you did that. So when I'm working with batteries, I work very, very slow and very, very carefully. This is an all-day project here, just changing out the electrical system in the tiny house and wheels. But I am rerouting all the wires, including the wires to the powder, power inverter, the solar panel, the cutoff from the solar panels. Literally everything is going to be redone. So I've got four 12-volt batteries now. Each one is 6 volts. Run together in series gives me a 12-volt battery. Um, 
I'm going to go get a meter and check these out just to be extra sure that uh, the batteries are all good.